Welcome to the biggest deal I ever sold. Today I'm speaking to Susan Canavan about her $25 million deal selling the famous Merv Griffin estate and we'll even take a stroll down memory lane as we reminisce about historic Hollywood. The biggest deals in real estate and the stories behind them. Hosted by serial entrepreneur Bill Svoboda. Brought to you by Close Simple, the trusted name in real estate communication. Who asks, how well does your title and escrow company communicate with you during the closing process? And now, the biggest deal I ever sold. Well, Susan, thanks for joining me today on the biggest deal I ever sold. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm fantastic. Thank you, Bill. I'm in beautiful, sunny and very hot Palm Springs. Sounds amazing. And, um, you know, I'm excited just to have this conversation with you because I've heard about you for a while and you're there in the desert and you're just crushing it. So I'm excited to talk about the biggest deal you've ever sold. You've sold properties over 25 million in the desert and in the LA area and that whole region. But today, the big deal we're going to talk about specifically is an estate that you sold for a celebrity that the story is just incredible and everybody's going to want to hear about it. But, you know, before we dive into that story, I want to start with just, can we go back to your first transaction, the first deal you ever got? Like, what year was that and how much was it? Well, it was in 1980 and um, we moved to America. My husband was recruited to play soccer um, in America and I was in banking and and my husband, fortunately, he was also qualified as an engineer. But um, anyway, we came to America in 1980 and he was um, scouted by the California Surf at that time. And then he went on and played in the um, indoor league. And all. But we weren't posh and becks. You know, it wasn't a time of, of, of that sort of money. So we had um, other jobs. He had another job as an engineer. And, and so I was looking for a job and I'd been in banking and it's to cut a long story short, I interviewed for a, a job and it turned out to roll into a real estate job where I was um, given the opportunity to get a real estate license. And the first house that I saw in my real estate life was the Hilton mansion in Los Angeles. And I never, I mean, it was just the most incredible art deco beautiful mansion and I thought wow this is so different to real estate in London and, and the UK walking into a sort of Hollywood set because it was just extraordinary you know I um, had grown up in a, a small home in England and then you know moved to America and Los Angeles was Hollywood incarnate and so um, seeing this with the person that I was going to be working with just I, I suppose that at the time, my my brain couldn't take in what my eyes were looking at. That was the sort of feeling that you got. And um, then went on to work in Los Angeles and and um, and sell a, a project on the Wilshire Boulevard and 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 worked in LA in the eighties. So saw the growth of of LA and those wonderful um, moments when Westwood was growing and. Um, so, you no, know, it's, a, it's a wonderful a, a American dream story for me, really. Talk to me about how you built your business then. You're very successful in the desert, like, I, like we said. Like, you're in the desert there. How have you built your, like, relationships? Talk to me about building relationships. Like, what does it look like for you? Well, to build a relationship again is really um, doing your job and doing it well and keeping engaged. I think it's really important. Communication's everything. And yeah. so with any type of sales job, you've got to keep engaged and you have to, at some point, realize you've got to keep in touch with people. And I think that's important. And so it's, it's really um, down to you whether you can and build, build those continual relationships and, and make them work. And you, you, know, you don't want to lose someone that you've sold a home to, to somebody else. So it's really up to you to just keep, keep that communication going. That's great. Well, Susan, this kind of brings us to the point of the show where I wanna talk about the biggest deal you've ever sold, okay? Now, 
we know that you've sold massive deals. I wanna focus though, we could talk about the $25 million deals. I wanna focus on a celebrity client that you had. And specifically, could you just paint the picture for us? And I think how much was the deal and tell us who this celebrity was. Well, the celebrity was, um, I, that's why I thought it would be really fun to speak about this particular property because you know we are Palm Springs. We're the hub of the Rat Pack history. And you know, you've got these great legacy properties that sometimes you walk into a home and oh gosh, yeah, Frank Sinatra did live there at one at one point or Dinah Shaw. In fact, my business partner Deirdre, she she lived in Dinah Shaw's one of her first homes and, and George Hamilton's home, you know, and so we can talk about those things. That's not something we we can't talk about. But um one of the most fun properties I think that we sold was the Merv Griffin estate. And for me, he was, I mean, the greatest um, example of the true impresario entrepreneur with all that he did. You know, he was an amazing singer and piano player. And, you know, he had that great backstory. And when we first saw his estate, he passed away and we went to look at the estate and it, it's in an area of La Quinta and where there are, it's where Coachella is and Stagecoach, you know, now it's quite a famous area and Coachella Stagecoach and also the Madison Club um, backs onto his property now, um, which is where the Kardashians live and that's all wow. public knowledge, you know, but it's just interesting. And so when we first saw Merv's estate, it was, it was a shock. Um, it, was for, it's for, it was 40 acres and he had his own racetrack. He bred thoroughbreds there, very, very successful thoroughbreds. He was a great um, lover of horses and horse racing. And he went on to be a tremendously, from his music background and then into um, his talk show and the other things, he went on to be, a, a, an absolute incredible real estate developer and acquired some tremendous properties and um, so when we saw the house and the estate it was a shock because the main house was just 5,000 square feet but he had all of these beautiful outbuildings and pods and Again, it's a home where if the walls could speak, you know, his great friend was Ava Gabor and um, everyone in the industry had at some point been to Merv's yeah. estate. And he had these beautiful little casitas and, um, and he's, he worked with um, an interior designer that was incredibly famous. And um, it, he made it, a Moroccan statement. And so it was something that was it was just a shock. And so it had its own lake, the stables, the house, and his piano was center stage. Um, and we list it was originally listed at 14 million, just over 14 million, but we sold it um, at 7 million because it was such an unusual property and um, it was leased out and I think it was $30,000 a night at one time to lease and Coachella has gone on to to have their after parties there and it's just the most tremendous property so when you were there you just had this sense of of amazing Hollywood yeah. history and it was just beautiful well I think you said it you said it perfectly when you kind of set up this, this story, like this is Rat Pack legacy. This is an era that was just so different than today. You know, this is a piece of history. I mean, it, like you said, if these walls could talk, the stories that we'd hear, could you just share, like, how did you get that listing? Like, go back to day one of that. Yeah, we actually... Um shared the listing with another real estate group in the desert, which we, you know, we do from time to time, Deirdre Croyt and myself, and um, we shared it with another group and they were referred by the, um, the, the people that were managing the estate. And so 
that's how we got it. And we, we get that often. We'll, we'll get um, lawyers or bankers that will contact you to, to um, collaborate and, and manage, yeah. manage your states. And, and how did you go about, so you, you get the listing, how do you go about marketing something like that? Like, what do you do? Well, it, it was a while ago that we, we actually sold it, wasn't it? It was in 2012. So I know it sounds like an old fashioned story, but it's still very relevant because it's still being used in the most amazing way. But, um, well, with now, um, it's very different. I mean, how we market today, um, the tools that we have, just like this, how we're, we're talking, I'm in Palm Springs, your wherever your studio is and we can communicate in this manner and advertise we do virtual with with what's going on with covid um we do virtual tours of the homes we the the technology today is it amazing at your fingertips at the time we were do a beautiful brochure we would advertise in the newspapers magazines network massive network and you know we can network yeah. even then we networked all over the country and it was actually a local group that purchased the home uh, an investment group but we were able to we we've advertised and we actually sold a home sight unseen to someone in hawaii that saw it from an ad that we had in palm springs life um, and the first, when you asked about the first house that I sold in 1980, the first condo I sold in 1980, for, that was purchased over the telephone from a, a gentleman that was in Hong Kong and he'd never seen wow. the property. Wow. And so that was, you know, the way, the way that you can market your properties today is, is just endless. Is there something like, wait, like, what's the thing now that motivates you? Like, what's the thing that drives you forward? You've worked with a lot of great properties, a lot of great people. Um, what's the thing that keeps you going now? Well, I think the fact that I can keep going, which is, is marvelous. And during this, this time of COVID where so many people, Bill, have lost their jobs, they've lost, you know, we're, we're in such a strange time and I'm really grateful that I can actually get up and get dressed and perhaps go out to work. We can't go to our office, so everyone's pretty much working from home. But the fact that I have the, the great fortune of being able to still be working because real estate right now is, is literally booming where we are in, in Palm yeah. Springs. Let me ask you this. If there was one thing, and it's just been a pleasure to talk to you here today, but if there was if there was one thing that you would love to leave with everybody, you know, the people who are going to watch this, we have people in sales, we have people in real estate, people of every profession, and they're looking at somebody like you who's been in your career now for a significant part of your life. You have a lot of learning. Like, what's something you'd love to leave with everybody? Well, I think, again, thinking about the time that we're living in and... Um, and no matter how successful you are, and I think I said it, it's really important to stay humble and be kind and, and just live your day with that, that kindness and humbleness that will help you move forward and will help anyone you meet during the day. Just think about who you're dealing with because you don't know what their backstory is. And yeah. it could be it could be a tragic backstory, and so just think about that and remember to be humble. Be humble. That's a great takeaway, Susan. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you here today on the biggest deal I ever sold. Um, Want to thank you for taking a few minutes out of your day, and um, you know I think everybody that watches this one they're going to get a sense of this golden era of Hollywood, but two, just stay humble, like that's your key to success. And that's why you are where you are today. So thanks for being on the show with me today. And today, you have, oh, you have. Still. Yeah, it's really, really great to speak to you. And um, I, I appreciate uh, having the opportunity. Thanks.